All right, guys, today we are going to be making a little bit of a longer video, but we are going to be going over what I think is probably one of the coolest knife companies out there, at least here recently, that is making their first runs. I think that this is a company that is really worth checking out, especially, especially if you are trying to obtain a Survive Knives GSO or a Survive Knives in general. You will definitely want to watch this video because I think this new knife company, Architect Knives, or a K, as I'm going to call them in this video, is really challenging the position of Survive Knives. And I think it's a really incredible thing. So this is going to be, like I said, a little bit of video. We're going to go over a lot. And first off, and probably most importantly, I want to talk to the people that are either trying, thinking, or wanting to buy a Survive Knives and give you guys some reasons as to why you should abandon your Survive Knives venture and actually go and check out AK or Architect Knives. Because I think that this knife company is really, like I said, challenging these guys um, or Survive Knives in a lot of ways. And initially, if you guys can see here, this is an AK 6.5. This is my Survive Knives GSO 5.1. You guys can see here, very, very similar blades. There are definitely some differentials. They are not the same knife, but there's definitely some inspiration. And to be fair, both of these knives are not necessarily the most original design, the most crazy design. They are just really well-designed field knives and in, for the most part, premium materials. So we're going to jump into it. We're going to talk about this AK 6.5 and how it stacks up to the Survive GSO 5.1. All right, so like I said, I think it's worth noting, especially if you are interested in buying a Survive Knives, this is a really solid contender and I think something that you should pick up. It, if you are trying to search or look for a Survive GSO. And the primary reason why that is, is as I said in my breakdown of the Survive, it was really unfortunate because it's one of the best knives I've handled that I cannot recommend at all, simply for the fact that Survive is not moving orders. Now they have a million excuses for that and we're not gonna talk about it. I really don't think there's any excuse, as I've said many times before, for the lack of sending knives that you have five or people have been waiting five plus years to receive. So I think that that is inexcusable. So I'm not interested in hearing any excuses. However, the cool thing about AK or Architect Knives is the fact that from the time that I placed my order, from the time that they shipped this thing, or I should say they, I placed my order, they had the knife shipped the same day and I received it in less than a week. So for me, that is a huge win because this is a knife that if I need it for field craft or for survival practice, or wilderness living, I can order it and have it at my door in less than a week. So for me, that turnaround time is great and the communication from start to finish with AK was fantastic. So I really have to applaud these guys. They did an excellent job in that regard, but it does get better. So if you are considering AK or like I said, if you're considering Survive, choose AK not only because of the fast turnaround times, but also to the very similar materials. So this one in particular, as you guys could probably tell here, is made of CPM3V. And not only are most Survives made of CPM3V or MagnaCut, but you can also get these in MagnaCut. Um, these are also heat treated by Peter's heat treat which is very cool because as these guys like to show off a survive hopefully you guys can see there i have to actually force the focus here this is a peter's heat treat as well hopefully you guys can see that there um, so this is a peter's heat treat this is a peter's heat treat as well so if you get an ak and cpm 3v it is going to perform very very similarly to survives blades as well not to mention too the very cool thing about um, ak is that they're steel blanks so they come in four different steels 1095 cpm 3v which is what this guy is in they come in cpm s35 v VN and CPM Magna Cut. The 1095 and 3V are supplied and made by Topps Knives, and White River Knife and Tool makes the CPM S35 VN and Magna Cut blanks for them. So, quality, reputable companies are making the blanks for these knives, and I 
literally own <laughs> knives from Tops and would buy Tops knives. I'd buy White River Knife and Tool blades as well. So these are companies that I already definitely fully trust. And so it's very cool that that is where they're sourcing their blanks from. So you're getting them from very reputable companies. And I think that that really helps. So once again, you got reputable Tops, um, you know, made the blank, or cut out the blank, you know, ground it. Um, and then of course it was heat treated by Peter's Heat Treat, which is incredible. They have a really good track record. And once again, same performance of a Survive blade. This, they are going to perform very, very similarly because of that. So the, those are the core reasons if you are looking at getting a Survive, why you should get an AK instead. They are very similar in build. Now granted, they are not, once again, the same knife. The handle is slightly different. They have a smaller finger choil. You can still definitely comfortably choke up on this, as you guys can see here. I have no problem choking up on that finger choil. It's not as big as the finger choil on the Survive. Um, and of course, there's a little bit of a differential in the tip shape, and the AK has a much higher um, saber grind, whereas the Survive has a much shorter um, grind there. So you guys can see that the handle, like I said, is longer, and there is some differential, of course, in the pom pommel area, and the handle, kind of how this tapers off, more like an SE6. This has more of its own kind of shape. Either way, they're both incredibly comfortable to hold. I have no issues. The ergonomics are very squared away with both of them. They're very well rounded. Um, there's no issues there. Um, <clears throat> But like I said, definitely a little bit different, but for the most part, and similar enough that if you are, you know, wanting the Survive for applications specific to it, this will definitely fit those applications. Now, I will say as a note, like I said, this is a Survive GSO 5.1. This is an AK 6.5. Take this size comparison for what it's worth. They are fairly similar. So if you are wanting or were wanting a GSO 5.1, I'd recommend the 6.5. Um, they do make other models. They make anywhere from three inch. There's also a 5.5 um, as AK calls it, and they have all the way up to an eight. Uh, so those are their sizes. They have larger, you know, kind of more chopper style blades with the eight, um, the AK-8, but they also have smaller, more ADC styled blades with the, I believe, AK-3. So there's plenty of options to choose from in that regard. And once again, I would probably stick with 6.5 for general purpose survival and field knife. All right, so I've talked about reasons why, if you're going for a Survive, why you should go with the AK instead. Let's talk about what actually makes the AK better. So first off, as Architect knives kind of sounds, and you guys can see their cool logo here, these are knives that not only do you, you know, pick from a, you know, about four different models. These are also knives that you get to design. So first off, we talked about the steels and their supplier. You can choose from 1095, 3V, S35VN, or MagnaCut. And so it gives you your first kind of layer of choice. And of course, if you're trying to go for a more budget build, going for something like the 1095 definitely makes it more affordable. But I personally chose CPM 3V because I am a personal fan of CPM 3V myself and I'm maybe slightly biased in that regard. The next choice that you get is the handle and they have a variety of different canvas micarta handles. This is the double red canvas micarta. Hopefully that shows up for you guys pretty well there, but this is a double red canvas micarta and they also have a number of G10 handle offerings as well. Once again, I prefer the micarta just for the little bit of extra grip. I definitely love love it, uh, but I would imagine that the G10 is also totally fine. This is G10, of course, on the Survive, but I definitely prefer the canvas micarta. In addition to that, then next, of course, you pick your sheath. So they have a number of different sheath options. I chose the Kydex sheath. You can choose the leather sheaths as well, um, but I prefer personally prefer the Kydex sheets. Then of course you have your choice of different mounting options. So if you do choose Kydex, you have um, leather or nylon placards that you can put on the back that have a more traditional belt loop. I chose the uh, essentially the blade tech um, like 
molly locks i believe they are they're essentially the same company that makes the tech lock but these guys are a little bit thinner and more narrow so i would run this thing or rig it up as a scout style so that's why i have these guys here um, <clears throat> to help run as a scout style blade so um, that's kind of my personal mounting choice but once again once again, there's plenty of different mounting choices as well. So that's how I have mine configured with that. And then the other thing that's pretty cool is in their configuration in like in your build process. You so additionally, if you don't have or you want more, they have fire steels and paracord that you can choose to ship with the knife. And I really do like that because someone like myself, I have plenty of ferro rods and I have tons of paracord, so I don't really need any more. But I do like that option because you may not have as much paracord or if you're trying to just build out a survival kit knife, um, it's nice to just start off with those essentials shipped with the knife itself. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, overall as a setup, it's very well put together. This is what mine looks like. Of course, I haven't thrown the uh, molly locks on there, but I will in due time. But I thought it would definitely be cool to get a video out and really talk to you guys about this blade because I think it is very cool. And what really piqued my interest the most was the fact that, like I said, when I initially got my Survive Knives GSO, it is a well-crafted knife. I love it, but I really can't recommend it just because the really shoddy customer service and really shoddy just even chance of you getting your knife is not a 100% guarantee. So it's like if you manage to get a Survive GSO, it's great but what i love about architect knives or ak knives is it's a knife that i can sit down and recommend to you guys and be like this is a really solid survival knife this is something that you can actually get your hands on and once again from start to finish with the whole process of the knife um, from the time that i ordered it and then it got shipped the same day and i had it in my hands in less than a week i think that is really stellar and uh, the customer service is fantastic with them. I initially placed my order for a blood red Kydex sheath and they told me, you know, they gave me the option to keep that and they gave me like the lead time on the, you know, blood red Kydex that they were working on getting. And they also gave me options like the gray and I ended up choosing the gray because I was like, that's just fine for me personally. Um, but it's nice to that they, you know, communicated clearly with me and were like, hey, we can do the blood red sheath. It's just going to be a two week wait, or we can offer you, you know, a um, gray sheath. And I was perfectly fine with that. So these guys are really cool. I definitely would recommend checking them out. Um, and I think, well, to be fair, this is more like a first impressions. I don't have any dirt time on this blade. Um, it really seems to stack up quite well with the GSO uh, from Survive. And once again, same heat treat, same steel that they're using. And so it's going to perform very similarly. So like I said, even if you do have your trepidations, like, oh, I don't necessarily trust Architect Knives. Like there's a lot of very trustable, trustworthy brands like Tops, like I said, is the one making the knife blank. Peters is the one heat treating it. Now, lastly, my last th like point and why I really think that these knives are awesome and why I love them is that the price point. And of course, I do have to put a quick disclaimer out there because this is an a la carte kind of knife or because this is essentially an a la carte knife, you know, you are going to be building this yourself. So the build may vary, right? If you choose a more expensive sheath, it might be more expensive, but this total package with the, um, Molly Locks, the Kydex, the 3V, the uh, Canvas Micarta all came in at about $255. So this is as a unit $255, whereas a Survive GSO 5.1 in MagnaCut is about $280. Now, full disclosure, I did trade for this knife, so I did not pay money physically for this, but I did trade a another knife that was comparable in value. So it's about a $280 knife, um, whereas this is a $255 knife. So I think, in my opinion, that is really good, especially considering all of the hands that go into making this. So once again, you have tops, you know, making the knife blank. You have Peter's heat treating it. You have, um, I believe, in-house micarta handles being made, Kydex being made. So when you look at all of the people that collectively go together to make this knife, I was excited, but a little bit trepidatious on like how expensive it was going to be. But the fact that they're able to put this out for the price that they are, like $255 is by no means cheap, but also at the same time too, with once again, sourcing tops, sourcing, you know, quality brands that are not going to be cheap to help 
make components for this knife or build this knife essentially. Um, I'm very impressed with the price point they were able to bring this knife in at. So overall, um, it's pretty cool. I was definitely lucky too. I got a first run, hopefully you guys can see their edition of the AK 6.5. This is one that I'm definitely excited to be running through its paces and testing out and once again, bringing more content. Of course, this is definitely not the last video y'all will see with this knife, but it is cool. So. I definitely just wanted to put that out there, especially, like I said, if you are considering getting a Survive GSO, um, especially watching some of the last production updates um, where Survive is moving away from these uh, GSOs like the 5.1 and MagnaCut, um, I'm definitely like 100% go with this knife. Like, don't think about it, just do it. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video and this breakdown. Like I said, it's gonna be a little bit of a longer video, but I really wanted to cover in depth the reasons why I think um, Architect Knives is really making an awesome product here. And lastly, for those still watching, I definitely wanna thank my subscribers because they were the ones that actually pointed this AK out for me when I made my initial video on my Survive GSO. They're there were a handful of people in the comment section that were like, hey, you should go check out Architect Knives. And I had never heard of them, but it was really cool to actually see the knife and be like, hey, this is really a close competitor and uh, definitely pick one up. So I'm very happy and very thankful to the subscribers that recommended this knife because there are so many different knife makers out there from my perspective. I try to provide as much content as you guys can tell about knives and knife brands, companies, who to go with and really just try to get you guys the best competitive options out there. And so I definitely appreciate when I have subscribers are like, hey, check out this brand. Hey, check out that brand. And if you guys haven't already recommended knives, like obviously I can't cover every single knife that gets recommended to me because literally dozens of knives get recommended to me per week. So there's no way I can check out every single one. But when I see a knife that has a really compelling um, you know, offering or a brand that has a really compelling offering. I try my best to get those knives in for you guys so that I can bring it and once again, put it out so that everyone can see it. So that's what I'm doing with this guy. And like I said, I'm definitely excited to make more content with the AK 6.5. And even at this point, once again, you know, some people hate it when I say, you know, like, oh, go buy one of these without me like extensively field testing this knife. But once again, I have used a hundred knives, at least probably more than that in field, in field application. And so we're just picking up a knife. I can tell you a lot about it, whether it's going to work or not. Some people hate when I say that stuff, but truthfully speaking, like I have tested a lot of knives and uh, you get to the point where when you've like tested over a hundred knives in the field, you pretty much know just when you pick it up, whether a knife is going to work or not. And once again, both the Survive GSO 5.1 and the AK 6.5 are fantastic knives. But in my opinion, I can't recommend the Survive due to the company's personal issues, but I can totally recommend the Architect knives uh, because they are really cool. And the last thing, when it comes to the Architect brand, they are a reasonably new brand, but from all my indications, everything I can tell, they're essentially an offshoot of the Knife Connection or TKC. And I have reviewed TKC knives on, or not necessarily TKC knives, because Architect is essentially their brand now, but I've reviewed knives um, that have like I've gotten from them and that I've tested and stuff. And so TKC has been around for a while now. And so they are a brand that isn't going anywhere. They're not really, you know, um, just a flash in the pan. So that's another reason why I can sit here and say like AK is a solid brand. It's once again, the people who own um, TKC or the Knife Connection are the ones that make AK knives. So it is a, a reputable company that already deals knives, which is probably why they have the ability to work with companies like Tops and um, White River Knife and Tool to get steel blanks made for them. So anyways, guys, that's enough rambling about this uh, company. It is a really cool company. If you haven't already, do check them out. And uh, if you, especially if you're looking for a Survive, this is a company I can recommend. And their knives look by all appearances to be a fantastic product. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video as always. God